Once again, welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 20 this time. Some small jobs to do and a little more painting. The inside of the hull was painted black yesterday, and even though the paint is dry, it's not fully hardened yet. Besides, there are some little jobs to do on some of the parts that will be going back into the hull very shortly, so I thought I'd pick up on a few of the smaller jobs, like cleaning up the propeller. This propeller doesn't look like a commercial item, it looks like it was made by the original builder, so it seems like a good idea to clean it up. And before I get anybody writing in, I am aware that it's not a good idea to polish up antique parts. Unless it's a propeller that fits on a steam launch, that is. For instance, in my workshop on a shelf, I have a really old lamp. It's very, very old, and possibly the last thing I would ever do with it is polish it up. It's very tempting, because it's made from brass and copper but with the lamp it's a no-no. An antique piece is an antique piece, but this is a bit off a model steamboat that was looking much worse for wear. And what I've also done, apart from just polishing it, I've reprofiled the propeller, because the metal surface was very rough. Now it isn't, it's very smooth. And when this is fitted back to the boat, and the boat is all newly painted, it will look very nice. This morning, something good arrived in the post. It's the piece of ceramic to finish the ceramic burner. And it's only just big enough. I really did think it was going to be slightly bigger. Because the last piece of ceramic that I got from Mike Abbott at Max Steam was bigger than this. The first thing to do is to put the original two halves of the pieces of ceramic that I had left on top of this new piece and draw around them. And as you can see, I'm really struggling to get the diameter from this piece of ceramic. So it's a little bit smaller. But it's worked out well because I was never pleased with the way the edge of the ceramic looked so I'm going to put a brass band round it. Here's a ceramic, and it's just a little bit too small, but it won't be soon when I put this round it. This is a piece of brass that I rolled into a circle with some small bending rollers that I have. Then I silver soldered the joint, and now I have a brass ring that I'm currently cleaning up on some 400 wet dry sandpaper. This piece of ceramic is now quite a good fit in the brass ring, but I don't really want to risk pressing the ceramic into the brass ring because I'm sure it will break. I'm just using some sandpaper around the edge to reduce the diameter. So now this piece of ceramic is a nice easy fit in the brass ring. And now it's time to press the brass ring into the burner head. This is quite a good fit. I measured the brass very carefully before I cut it. As you can see this piece of ceramic is not a perfect fit in the ring, but it's near enough for jazz. I may actually fill in the gap with some fire cement. Somewhere in the workshop I have part of a tin left from when I repaired my coal fire. But I'm not going to get too worked up over this. I'm going to test the burner first and make sure that it works okay. In this clip I'm lighting the burner. I've connected the burner of course to a gas supply. So what I'm going to do now is just dim the light slightly so you can see the warm glow coming from the ceramic burner. A warm glow is possibly not the best way to describe it. This is a very, very hot flame. I'm feeding the burner currently from a gas tank that's nearly empty. So I would think that what's left in there is mainly butane at a low pressure. But nevertheless, it's a success. This is a very good burner. And the good news, it is now January in England, and it's very cold up north. And in my workshop, in the short space of time that I had this burner on, the workshop became quite warm which is a first. I can detect a slight blue flame around the edge of the burner, but this will disappear when I seal everything with some fire cement. I'm just testing the heat by cremating my craft knife, and it takes no time at all before the blade glows red. And once again, I'm not detecting any carbon monoxide in the workshop, because I don't feel ill, I'm not going dizzy, and I haven't died. And I know I am being flippant about carbon monoxide, it's very nasty stuff. So by way of a quick health and safety warning, it's a good idea to get a carbon monoxide detector in your workshop if you're messing about with gas burners. And now it's painting time. I'm painting the body of the burner using exactly the same paint that I painted the inside of the hull with. This is made by Hammerite and it's called Bike Pot Black. It says on the tin that this paint is heat resistant so it should be fine for this burner body that's not going to get that hot anyway. So while you're watching this bit of painting, I'd just like to say thanks for all the good comments that you give me, and thanks for some of the tips. Some of them are good, some of them are really stupid, but such is life. 
The thing is, though, now it's getting silly. People are emailing me to just ask general questions. Questions that you could type into Google and get a much better answer than the short one I would have to give. It's getting to the stage now when I'm going to have to stop replying to them. I will, of course, reply to genuine inquiries, but when someone is asking me, where can I get a pipe bender from? I cannot find one anywhere. When all the time I'm putting links to Blackgate's engineering, who funnily enough, sell pipe benders as well. And for the painting enthusiasts, on this episode only, this is called Unpainting. And it's ideal after you've painted something, if you want to change the colour. If you decide that black is not for you, you just unpaint it like this. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.